So, so, so we come back to this diagram. Now, uh, Steve Hainsworth and I invented in the late 80s a way of taking a bone marrow aspirate, putting it through a couple of uh, percol gradients, and taking the top fraction and putting it onto a petri dish. And what you see in, in the round panel is colonies form from single MSCs attaching to the plate. And we can quantitate how many MSCs uh, by counting those colonies. And the trick to the whole technology is the batch of fetal calf serum that we grow the cells. One in 30 batches work. So you either use my assay for that batch of serum, or you use my serum, or you're going to get different results. If you just order fetal calf serum from one of the suppliers, you have a 3% chance of duplicating some of the data that I'm going to show you. So these are all of the assays that we invented to prove that the cell was multipotent. So if you put it in the top medium, you got a bone. If you put it in the middle, you got cartilage. If you put it in the bottom, you got fat. So same cell, those three phenotypes, that's why we called it a, a mesenchymal stem cell. And we've published papers using this in tissue engineering. I'm not going to go through any of this data, but you can use these cells if you push them into those lineage pathways. So I, I, I talk about the use of MSCs and tissue engineering as a way of regenerating uh, tissues. And it, it's a very important point in orthopedics because autologous bone, autologous marrow are the gold standard for uh, reconstructive surgeries. And the, it's clear that when an orthopedic surgeon is doing a reconstruction, they always take a little bit of marrow and put it on the reconstructive part as a boost to the osteogenic capacity. Actually, we've known since Aristotle that marrow has this ability uh, to form bone. And, and what we now know is that there are cells in marrow, some of which are called MSCs, but they have a marker for those cells that are already in that lineage pathway. In mouse, they're, uh, they're a transcription factor called MX1 positive. So we know what the marker is for those. So in this case, uh, these cells are already in this red box. They're already in this pathway in marrow. And, and that's why the orthopedic surgeons favor the use of marrow as a way of doing bone reconstructions and, and, and controlling it. So to, to be a tissue engineer and, and make uh, bone, you need a scaffold, uh, you need the cells, and, and you need the proper signals uh, to, to get those cells in that scaffold to make bone, and the key to that, of course, is how much marrow you incorporate into that construct. So the lineage-restricted MSCs, the ones in that red box that I showed you, are the ones that are making this bone. And we know that those cells are close to the bone surface, and they have a marker called CD166. So I can prepare chips of bone with the marrow still attached that are hugely osteogenic, and, and this is the assay to show that I can, I can do that. So we started a company uh, called Cell Bank Technologies. One million knees and hips in the United States are replaced every single year. By 2016, all the baby boomers will be in that group, and it'll be up to 1,500,000, 1, increase of 50%. Um, we're going to offer patients a service like cord blood, but for 60-year-olds, that you can take all of this bone, all of this marrow that's discarded, and bank it. I'll process the marrow so that the MSCs stay attached to the bones. I'll process the marrow so that we can get MSCs out of the marrow or send the marrow back to the orthopedic surgeon. And, and it's a patient pay model, just like uh, cord blood. So in the OR, there'll be a box. The orthopedic surgeon will put the femoral head or, or the knees 
and the marrow in the box will be shipped to the processing plant and, and we will produce um, marrowized cancellous chips, we'll produce uh, uh, processed marrow, and I can get more MSCs from that discarded material than you could get from a 20 ml aspirate that you put in culture and you take the third passage. So this is minimally manipulated. This is all tissue banking. There is no FDA regulation except for the GMP facilities that we use to process this. So it's autographed and it's minimally manipulated, not cultured, not expanded, and, and, and a pure population of these cells. And, and the shocking piece of data that we purchased from a data mining company in Philadelphia is that of the million knees and hips in 2006, those patients, 5.1% of those patients within three years, 5.1% within three years, are back in the operating room needing graft material by hospital code. So uh, old people like me, uh, we need that graft material because uh, I've had my hip replaced. The one thing I know for a fact, I'm coming back to the operating room. There's just no question because I got other joints and I got other problems. And I want that graft material. And so you can bet that my femoral head, my marrow, is in my freezer in my laboratory with my name all over it. And, and again, um, just for graft material, MSCs aside, uh, this is actually a very useful commodity and, and in essence an insurance plan for people who get uh, joint replacement instead of throwing away all of that material. The undeveloped part of it is a ton of MSCs, your own MSCs, sitting in the bank in case you need them. Uh, hopefully, uh, I won't need them, but uh, they're in the bank. So Selvig, think about Selvig. 